The headlines that we're looking at here, the big one is Justin Fields practicing in full. Looks like he's going to play against the Packers. Uh, 49ers have uh, some injury concerns that are looking at with Christian McCaffrey trending in the right direction, but Debo Samuel may be looking like he may not play. Uh, both Najee Harris and Benny Snell are banged up for the Steelers. Doug Peterson saying that Travis Etienne is good to go, so it seems like he's going to be active against the Lions in a big game there. Josh Jacobs remains limited, but trending in the right direction. Antonio Gibson, however, may not play against the Giants. And Michael Carter, listed as doubtful, probably not going to have him, which is good for Zonovan Knight and potentially Ty Johnson as well. Let's talk about a few of these stories again as we uh, give you some of the latest news, and we hope to get more practice reports before the show is out. And so, looking at Justin Fields, Dave, he uh, uh, you know, didn't play in the game last week, and it was bad to see Trevor Simeon. They lose Darnell Mooney in that game. But now he's taking on a Packers defense that has really been messy the last few weeks. How good could Justin Fields be? They've been messy against the pass. And what did Jalen Hurts do to them on the ground? Killed him. 157 rush yards. Yeah, I'm going to start Justin Fields as if he's out there for the Chicago Bears. And I know that there's a little bit of worry not having Darnell Mooney there, but I'm not sweating it because I'm counting on those rushing yards from Justin Fields. And I still think that there's enough there in the passing game to support Fields as a passer to get what you need from him, which is about 200 yards and one touchdown. The rest is going to come on the legs. He's playing. I'm starting him. Don't hate me, Jamie. I like him better than Trevor Lawrence. Uh, no week. problem with that. I mean, look, he's been a top three quarterback when he's been right, so hopefully he will be right. No issues with the shoulder, no pain worries, and no hits on the shoulder that you know cause any problems. Uh, in terms of the pass catchers there for Chicago, Cole Komet, Chase Claypool, Adam, how much do you like those guys? I don't really like Claypool. He's just done absolutely nothing, and I know he gets more of an opportunity here, but you know he, he's barely played really with the Bears, so I'm just avoiding Chase Claypool. But Komet does become somebody that I'm pretty interested in. We just haven't seen him without Darnell Mooney. When a team loses its target leader, that's a really big deal. So I think you're going to see a few more targets from Cole Komet. You might see a, a lot of targets. He might really lean on Cole Komet in this game if Justin Fields does in fact play, which we're expecting. And you look at the rankings there, I mean, Njoku's probably not going to play. So you're going to end up with Cole Komet as tight end seven this week. And I think that's absolutely correct. The other guys I would start ahead of him, but there is nobody behind Komet that I would play. He is tight end seven. The three games before Fields got hurt, which was week 11 against Atlanta, he had scored five touchdowns. So Cole Komet coming off a strong stretch of games with a healthy Justin Fields. Other quarterback injuries that we're monitoring, Lamar Jackson thankfully practicing in full on Thursday. He should be good to go despite the quad injury. And Rodgers limited, but he is going to play against Justin Fields and the Bears. We know his history there. 17 touchdowns, no interceptions his last five games against the Bears. He loves playing Chicago in Chicago. So he owns them. Fun there to see how that game unfolds. Matthew Stafford not expected to play dealing with the neck injury. We'll find out if it's going to be John Wofford or Bryce Perkins. Wofford probably better for the pass catchers there in Los Angeles. Some running back injuries that we're looking at. Well, I guess team injury. We'll, we'll start with San Francisco. So Christian McCaffrey practiced on Thursday. He's trending in the right direction. Debo Samuel, however, went from limited in practice on Wednesday to did not practice on Thursday. And Kyle Shanahan saying in a radio interview Friday morning that he's got to have to do some stuff in practice to play because it's not looking very good. So, uh, Adam, I'll start with you with the backfield situation here. Jimmy Garoppolo kind of indicated that it could be Jordan Mason as the second guy up. We've had a lot of this, you know questions on, is it going to be Tyrion Davis-Price or Tevin Coleman? So McCaffrey, we're starting, but who's the second guy that you're looking at and maybe adding prior to this game against Miami? Well, it would only be as a, as a handcuff. I guess it would be Mason because Jimmy Garoppolo talked him up a little bit, but it wouldn't shock me at all if it was a little bit messy or if it were Coleman or if it was TD. It would be maybe a little surprising if it were Tyrion Davis-Price, but I guess I'd pick up Mason. I would have no plans on starting him, no chance. But look, McCaffrey's got a history of injuries, hurt his knee last week, said he dodged a bullet. Is it the worst idea to handcuff McCaffrey? Absolutely not. You're talking about a 49ers running back, he's gonna, probably gonna get hurt, right? So Mason would be the guy. Now, as far as the receivers, you asked me about the receivers, I'm sorry, but uh, sure. I, yeah, sorry. I like Ayuk a lot, actually. Yeah, you know what, let's do the whole game. Uh, I like Ayuk a lot and uh, George Kittle. It goes from a guy that I'd be nervous to start but would start begrudgingly to a guy that I'm confident in starting if Debo Samuel doesn't play. All right, we'll see what uh, Ayuk does. Maybe getting Xavier Howard could be a tough matchup there for him if, in fact, they decide to match up the best cornerback against what would be the best receiver if Debo does not go. If Debo plays, he's probably a low-end number two, running, uh, number two uh, receiver dealing with this injury, obviously not at 100%. We'll get that update for you, if not by the end of the show today, on CBS Sports HQ or certainly on our Fantasy Football Today show on Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on CBS Sports HQ. Q. The Steelers' backfield, Dave, is now a little bit more slanting in the direction of Jalen Warren because Najee Harris not practicing again on Thursday. Benny Snell goes from the guy to now maybe being replaced to now limited with a knee injury. So 
Uh, how much more are you liking Jalen Warren right now? I'm liking him a lot because he's healthy, he's ready to go, he's over his hamstring injury, and he's been the most efficient running back that the Steelers have had this year. You go and you look at how he's doing just even basic stuff, like yards per carry, it's great. Yards after contact, he's good there too, and a good pass catcher out of the backfield. I suspect the Steelers would not use him the exact same way that they used Najee and Benny Snell last week, but they're still going to use him. They need somebody to run the football, and I think attacking those edges against Atlanta will be good for them. Here are my rankings where they're both playing in PPR. It's really close. Warren would probably move into the top 24 if there is no Snell. Warren being top 15 for me if there is no Snell. Just a great matchup. Six straight running backs, 18 or more PPR points against the Falcons. So big setup for Jalen Warren if Snell does not play. Some other running back stories that we're keeping an eye on here. You got the Raiders backfield situation with Josh Jacobs. We're hoping he's going to play. Pick up Zamir White just in case. Maybe Amir Abdullah. Adam, does 20 seconds. Zamir White, if there is no Jacobs, would be what? Yeah, about a borderline top 24, top 20 running back, something like that. Uh, I just don't really know quite what to expect from him. We have very little experience there, obviously. But if I'm in a pinch, he'd be, I'd be pretty excited to start Zamir White if Josh Jacobs didn't play. Dave, how much do you like uh, Brian Robinson if Antonio Gibson does not go? He did not practice on Thursday dealing with that foot injury. I'd like him a lot. He'd be the feature back for the Commanders against a Giants defense that's giving up about five yards per carry to opposing running backs. And I think the Commanders and their coaching staff really are buying into Robinson now. We've been seeing it with his workload over the last three games. Adam, if there is no Michael Carter, and he was listed as doubtful by Robert Sala, so probably not going to play against the Vikings, Zonovan Knight, Ty Johnson, makes sense of the Jets' backfield. Dave made a great point about why Zonovan Knight could be better than you think in PPR because Mike White throws the ball extremely short. He's very conservative. The Vikings allow a lot of that kind of underneath stuff. Uh, so even though he might, he's not going to play on third down, he could still have, I don't know, three, four catches, something like that. I have low expectations, though, because the Vikings' run defense is so good. I'm not going to start Michael Carter. Knight is a low-end number two running back, somebody that I think is maybe around 10 PPR fantasy points. Yep, uh, we'll see if they get into the end zone, but certainly the work in the passing game for both those guys could be important. And again, while we are going to tell you pick up Zonovan Knight, don't overlook Ty Johnson. He's the one that typically plays on more obvious passing down situations. So if they are chasing points, we may see him on the field a little bit more than expected. The other injuries that we're looking at from the running back perspective, you got Cam Akers dealing with an illness, Jarrett McKinnon with the hamstring problems. So take a look at maybe Melvin Gordon because of Pacheco having a limited role in the passing game. Joe Mixon is expected to play, but has to clear the concussion protocol. And we do see uh, Raheem Mostert coming back. Dave, how much does that impact Jeff Wilson? It's bad news on top of bad news. It's a terrible matchup for Wilson to begin with. Last time they both played, they each had nine carries. It makes both of them unusable in fantasy. Especially if Teron Armstead does not play for the Dolphins, yep. their star left tackle. The wide receiver injuries that we're looking at here, you see Mike Williams, Jerry Judy, they're not expected to play. Traylon Burks, we hope to have out there, more of a number three receiver. Kadarius Tony probably not going to go, so Sky Moore gets a little bit of a bump, although you can't trust him. Hopefully it's just going to be a lot more of Juju Smith-Schuster. Darius Slayton did not practice again on Friday, so not a great situation there for the Giants. And then Michael Gallup dealing with an illness, we expect to see him out there, uh, hopefully, to build off what was his best game last week when he had a season high in targets and catches. Adam, Jamar Chase, easy just to say he's good to go. Yeah, yeah. I, I would rank Higgins ahead of him this week. Chase has just been sort of his comments just make it seem like he's not 100% yet. But there is zero chance I'm sitting him in this matchup. And we hope to see Devontae Smith and Zay Jones get in practice on Friday because both have great opportunities in their respective matchups. The tight end injuries, the big one is David Njoku not practicing on Friday, so probably not going to have him out there this week in the first game for Deshaun Watson. So frustrating situation for Njoku. It was a different knee injury that he dealt with for the last couple of weeks. So we hope to get him back hopefully for week 13. Uh, Juwan Johnson, hopefully he plays as well. He has been very touchdown dependent, but good matchup against the Bucs. They give up touchdowns to tight ends, so something to keep an eye on there. We'll have, again, more updates for you as we get them before the end of the show.